I wonder if anyone else thought that this kid's name was Token. Huh? Anyone else just assume his name was Token? Because that's disgusting and you are the problem. Happy February! Hi, I'm Kitty Bunk, and I'm here to talk to you about South Park, or more specifically, Token Black. Oh, you thought I said Token Black, as in the Token Black Kid? Because clearly I said Tolkien Black, as in J.R.R. Tolkien, the acclaimed author of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Seriously, why would two black people name their son Token? If you heard Token, you're racist, disgusting, and make me sick. Now, South Park has a reputation for being offensive. It's practically their bread and butter. But in my opinion, there's a difference between offensive, but still hilarious, and offensive for the sake of hating. South Park is usually the first one. Or at times they try to be the first one, but they don't explain themselves right so they end up being the second one. They make fun of everybody under the sun, and with most episodes, while they obviously state their opinion, they will make fun of both sides, or satirize them to an outlandish degree. It's more than most shows do, therefore, I applaud them. Besides, if you remember my disability video, they have a weird way of being accepting while still being offensive. So let's discuss. Previously on the Kitty Monk Chronicles, I talked about Chef, even if I should have been more clearer about who the Super Adventure Club was. My bad. But come on, the real life Super Adventure Club has this little thing called fair game, and I don't want to get sued or unalived. With Chef, I talked about how he was a stereotypical black man, overweight, a soul singer, always on the prowl to make love to women, etc. But despite this, Chef was oftentimes one of the smartest people in South Park. He was the straight man, the person the kids went to when they wanted advice or help they knew they couldn't get from their parents. He was their f friend. However, Chef joined the Super Adventure Club and started touching kids. So he was all but replaced with Token Black. Your car is so fat, he makes your sled go faster. Hey, don't call me fat, Token! Token and Chef are really polar opposites. Whereas Chef is a humble cafeteria chef, Token is a student at South Park Elementary. His family is the wealthiest in town as their jobs depend on the episode. I don't know. Sometimes they say they're lawyers, other times they say that Linda, who's also the name of Token's mom, not just Butters, is a chemist. For instance, your mother is a chemist for a pharmaceutical company, whereas your friend Eric Cartman's mother is a crack- <laughs> One pays more than the other. However, despite Token's name seeming racist, I'm watching you. He is far from offensive. He's one of the smartest kids in South Park and has plenty of amazing talents, like singing. In the episode Wing, he won a contest to sing at a Colorado pageant, and he got $200 in the process. To top it off, much like Timmy and Jimmy, he's readily accepted by the other kids, with the sole exception being Cartman. We'll get there when we get there. To top it off, Token is also voiced by a black man, Adrian Beard, one of the show's producers. Just pointing it out because I know there is that controversy about voice actors and race. I think even the show realized this because in The Big Fix, Token's father switched voice actors from Trey Parker to Beard, and the show hand-waved it as code switching. Yeah, Kyle. Well, y'all came to the right business. Oh! Oh, he didn't even talk like that before! However, things are not always right in Token's world. He has been quite upset about being the rich kid, such as in one of my favorite episodes, Here Comes the Neighborhood. During presentations, Ms. Ugh, damn it, writers. You know what? Her name is Diane. Anyhow, Diane is making the kids give presentations, but due to a combination of the kids being poor and her being super strict, she doesn't give high grades. That is, until Token goes to present. I also printed out the results on my color printer. Very, very good, Token. You get a check plus. All right. A check plus? That's better than a check. The other kids don't agree that Token did anything to deserve it because his family is rich. After all, they can afford to give him nice things, and it's hard not to argue they're right. My family isn't rich. Oh, come on, Token. Your new house is four times the size of anyone else's in town, and who else gets crab cakes and, and lobster tail in their lunch boxes? Your family is rich, dude. Well, there's also the fact that Token actually has parents that care about him and want him to do well in school. They're probably more open to helping him with his schoolwork. However, the differences are noted. 
the other kids have to shop at Walmart's equivalent, because Walmart won't come to South Park for three more seasons, and for fun, they have to play with sticks and rocks, and eat cut up hot dogs. And cut up hot dogs for lunch. Okay, that honestly sounds good. Like over rice amazeballs. Token feels insecure and tries to get his parents to act like poor people. I don't want to be rich anymore. I want to eat macaroni and cheese for dinner and, and, and wear clothes from Jmart. Jmart? Son, you, you don't know what you're saying. Unfortunately, there's snobs snobbier than Sideshow Bob at Whole Foods, meaning the second they step foot in a J-Mart, not a K-Mart, oh wait, that was K-Mart, I thought that was Walmart, they practically break out in hives. Son, can you just hurry it up? I don't think we quite fit in here. Well, the J-Mart is open 24 hours. How long is Armani open? 12? Does Armani have a pharmacy in the store? Or a McDonald's? Or a Dunkin'? Can you shop for clothing while also shopping for food and furniture? Did Beetlejuice reference you in his movie? Attention! J-Mart! Point is, Armani sucks. Calvin Klein is better. Token decides that if he can't live amongst the poor people, he'll simply call up more rich people. And can convince them to come to South Park. Coincidentally, they all happen to be black. Like Will Smith, Oprah, P. Diddy, Kobe Bryant, etc. Hi, welcome to the neighborhood. Well, thank you, young man. We're the Smiths. Ah, a local boy. You shall be our new playmate. Kind of makes me wonder if Token isn't just upset because he's rich, but because he's the only black kid in town. Sure, there's Chef, but Chef obviously isn't a child. Wait, hold on, off topic. I think it's weird how the two never had an episode or a moment together. Not because I'm saying something like, oh, all people of color know each other. I'm sorry, we don't. But Chef and Token are two totally different people. Not just in lifestyles, but personalities and how they go about things. The one thing they have in common is how they deal with racism. Plus, Cartman treats them differently. That would have also been cool to point out. But anyhow, Token invites rich people over to South Park, only to learn that to them, he isn't rich. He's upper middle class. And this is the room where my mom and dad keep their original Van Gogh painting. Yes, yes, we have one of those too. In fact, we have seven of them, I believe. You do? Ugh, the horror. I bet he does not even own a yacht. Plus, Token, I hate to say it, but you started a little too high. You did not invite rich people, as in you live in a deluxe apartment in Manhattan. You invited celebrities. Kyle Swartz is right. You gotta lowball these things. To say Will Smith's kids, Token's practically a beggar. Well, then why don't their daddies just act in a movie? Well, I think that they... Sometimes children must be very firm with their daddies. Indeed. Ew, Token, why don't you slap him? Oh no, it did not resist my urge to make that joke. Now, one reason I like the episode outside of Token is because of the subplot with Garrison. Full plots intersect to the end, therefore I have to talk about them. Because of Token's plan, more and more rich people come to South Park. Herbert Garrison, the most accepting person in South Park, takes notice. And mixing them with our pure non-rich kids. Oh yeah, and it won't be long before they drive all of us poor under a Achieving people out of town with inflated real estate costs. Ugh, rich people making it so I can't have my own apartment or go into space or pay for eggs. Garrison is joined by the other men of South Park in his hatred. Seems like all of a sudden South Park is being overrun by those types. You know, those types. Rich people. While Token tries and fails to integrate with the rich kids, Garrison schemes to get rid of them without actually realizing what he's doing is hugely racist. For example, Garrison burns a big lowercase t on their lawns because t equals time to leave. T time to leave? T is for time to leave, Cash Chucker! I'm calling the police. Eh, at least Kobe's cool with it. Token doesn't fit in anywhere, so the rich people suggest he go live with lions. How about we have a snowball fight? How about Barrick? Yes, Token, if you want to play such savage games, I suggest you go live with lions. <laughs> Seriously, Token, slap him. Wait, so earlier in the episode, Token tried to get the poor kids to watch The Lion King, but he bought a DVD, not a VHS. It's a DVD of The Lion King. DVD? We don't own a DVD player. Don't you have a VHS of it? I only have this. God, I'm old. I still remember having one of those mini TVs with the built-in VHS. In Lion King, Simba ran away because he thought he did not belong among the lions, only to realize he was denying himself his true place. Was this foreshadowing? The token surprise 
he doesn't get his windpipe ripped out as the lions love comedy. And also reading. There was that one show. Do you like jokes? What? Jokes! You know, funny, ha <laughs> ha! Even the lion leader, Aslan, allows him to stay. Pull my thorn! Come on! Pull my thorn! <laughs> <laughs> Token, I hope you appreciate him while you can, because Aslan will be dead at the end of the episode. You saw Narnia. However, the lions are annoying AF and do nothing but make corny jokes. But before you go, perhaps you would like a stick of gum? Ow. <laughs> Out of patience, Token learns his lesson. Jesus, lions suck. Yeah, if a lion alpha male is killed, then the new leader will also kill all of the cubs, so that the female will go into heat and he can mate with them. Be glad you left while you could. Because of the classism Garrison has been pushing, the rich people don't feel welcome in South Park and decide to have their own march on the town square. The Millionaire Million March. Wait, I think they say it. The Million Millionaire March. Yeah! Yeah, that's it. Although they do try to increase their numbers by paying people to march for them, including Chef. Uh, I don't make much money. We'll give you a hundred dollars. Ooh, fudge the snow now. Oh, he's in this episode. Maybe you could have hung out or had a nice word to talk. However, Garrison realizes there's one thing that scares rich people more than tax day. Ghosts? Bingo. Rich people won't want to live in South Park if they think it's haunted. As a result, they do this. <laughs> Tell me this town was hated? I didn't know! I didn't know! No, you're gonna scare Chef. Don't you remember the Halloween episode? However, this is not the only time the show takes advantage of Token's race. Token's first big appearance was in Cartman's Silly Hate Crime 2000. In the episode, Token calls Cartman fat one time too many. Kyle also helps. You call me fat one more time, I'm gonna smack you in the head with this rock. That oh! and of course, gets detention. However, due to federal jurisdiction, Cartman's crime is investigated by the FBI as a hate crime. For this act, Cartman is sentenced to juvie until he turns 21. But civilly, so. To send a message out to people everywhere that if you want to hurt another human being, you better make damn sure they're the same color as you are. Honestly, considering how Cartman treats Token in the later seasons, it's super weird watching this episode. Like, if it aired now, they probably would have replaced Cartman with, say, Stan or Kyle or even Butters. And had Cartman pretend he was always accepting when they got arrested. To make matters worse, this comes several days before the kids are due for a sledding race on Bill Collins Hill. Against the girls. Girls don't even know how to sled. Do something else. Yeah. yeah. I bet we can sled ten times better than you, donut punchers. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, if you want to win, just shove an Oscar up the butt of Phil Collins Hill. Phil Collins Hill sucks. Their attempts to break Cartman out of prison all fail. So they go straight to Token to tell him to forgive him. Too bad reality is a thing. Cartman's only hope is the governor of Colorado issuing a pardon. Meanwhile, prison life is not right for Cartman. Prisoner 24601 arriving. Wait a second. In addition to a hate crime, Cartman also stole a loaf of bread? Eh, sounds like him. The way I see it, there's two kinds of kids in the world. Kids who like Animaniacs and kids who don't like Animaniacs. I don't like Animaniacs. Neither do we. What if I don't watch Animaniacs because it's not my taste, but I respect the show for how influential it is today? Would I get my butt kicked then? Turns out Token's dad despises hate crime laws, but there's little he can do about it. I'd love to see you kids go down and give the governor a piece of my mind. Well, why don't you tell the governor yourself? Oh, he wouldn't listen to me. Why not? Because I'm black. Eh, sadly that checks out. The boys go to the governor and give him a colorful presentation. Oh, that's funny. On why hate crime laws are a savage hypocrisy. Because all crimes are hate crimes. If a man beats another man because that man was sleeping with his wife, 
Is that not a hate crime? The motivation for a crime shouldn't affect the sentencing. But instead, we should all be treated the same, and the same punishments for the same crime. Okay, I don't totally know what to say about this. I'm a person of color, and I do agree with the episode that just because you commit a crime against somebody different than you, it doesn't always mean it's motivated by, say, race or ethnicity. However, at the same time, the motivation for the crime does affect the sentencing, whether or not it's a hate crime. That's the point of sentencing. Why else do you think you get more time for, say, killing a child compared to killing an adult? Of course, the harsher the crime, the harsher the punishment. That's just how the justice system works or is meant to work. I feel like it would have been better if they showed the governor that not all hate crimes are hate crimes, which they more than did with Cartman in the courtroom scene. Who is Token? He's a black kid that goes to my school. Black? Did you say black? You called him black? He is black. Oh, he said it again. However, the governor is convinced. Hmm, that made the most sense of any presentation I've heard in the last three years. Cartman is free to go and the boys win the sledding race. Yay! Then there's the infamous with apologies to Jesse Jackson, which is inspired by the Michael Richards incident, also another one of my favorite episodes. Basically, Michael Richards, a comedian best known for playing Kramer in Seinfeld, shouted the n-word at a group of black people during a comedy routine. This act basically led to the downfall of his career. Among his attempts to rectify the situation, he offered public apologies and personally apologized to black activist leaders like Al Richards and Jesse Jackson, albeit he did not apologize to the people he cursed out. Of course, I'm sure they would have still rejected it, but if you hurt somebody, don't you go to them first. I mean, if I rob a lady at the grocery store, why would I apologize to the grocery store before I apologize to the lady? In typical South Park fashion, they make fun of his efforts to atone and how the public reacted to it. Randy is on Wheel of Fortune and gets to the final puzzle, with the category being people that annoy you. Really, Wheel of Fortune? Really? With one letter to go, Randy shouts the N-word and makes a fool of himself. Uh... Oh, naggers, of course. Naggers. Uh, can we cut to, uh... Can we cut to a... Too bad that in real life, like most game shows, Wheel of Fortune is not aired live, but several episodes are taped on the same day. Now yes, Randy did a terrible thing by not just saying a racial slur, but a racial slur in a public place on live TV. For no reason then to earn money. And yeah, I guess to some degree you could say, oh, it's an honest mistake, but all of his attempts to atone aren't to show that he's sorry, but rather to paint himself like a victim and avoid any and all responsibility. Such as how he apologizes to Jesse Jackson, not to say the black community or Wheel of Fortune or the studio audience. Thankfully, Reverend Jackson is open to accepting apologies. Huh? Apologize. Kiss it. Sierra, apologize. Makes me wonder if he made Michael Richards do the same thing. At school, Stan knows that the one person it upset more than anybody is Token, and he tries to make things right. However, all of his attempts come off as condescending to Token. Token, my dad wasn't trying to be offensive. Just forget about it. If you really think it's not a big deal, then you really are ignorant. That's all. I'm not fighting anybody. Honestly, he should have just stopped or said something like, Token, what my dad said was stupid. That was a horrible word, and I hope you know I don't think that way. Can we please just be friends? Or, you know, just quit when you're ahead. Dude, Jesse Jackson said it's okay! Jesse Jackson is not the emperor of black people! Fun fact, this is what Trey Parker fought after the Michael Richards incident. Now, like Here Comes the Neighborhood, there is a B plot, or maybe a C plot, I don't know, I need to talk about so it makes sense to the ending. Likely because of the Wheel of Fortune incident, the school invites a guest speaker to talk to the kids about sensitivity and why you should not use certain words. On the bright side, at least they did not single out Stan like they did when Randy got infected with alcoholism. To this end, they invite David Nelson, a public speaker who happens to be a little person. Please welcome David Nelson! 
Good morning, students. How are we all feeling today? School, you did something. Good on you for that. But shouldn't you have hired a black speaker? That's what the whole incident was about. At least then you could say why the N-word was so bad, or continue Token's point that wall slurs are obviously terrible. Unless you're part of a marginalized group, you'll never understand what it's like to be called that. I think even later, when Stan tries to bring up the assembly, Token does not care. So, black people are- <laughs> See? However, Cartman spends the entire assembly making fun of the guest speaker. Actually, no, that's the wrong phrase, my bad. Have you ever heard that joke that you have a gun pointed at you and the second you laugh, you'll get shot? Imagine Cartman is the dude behind the gun. Eric, be quiet! <laughs> no, no, it's okay. He'll run out of steam here pretty soon. You know, I'm kind of curious about what he did when he discovered Game of Thrones or X-Men Days of Future Past. Nelson feels like he can change Cartman for the better by simply talking to him, even if everybody involved says this is a fool's errand. It might be best if you just let it go. You don't understand. I don't think that's a very good idea, sir. He has to learn his lesson. True to fashion, all of Nelson's attempts fail. In fact, at one point, he runs out of patience so much that he snaps. Shut your <laughs> mouth! He, he, he didn't get to me. I, 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 was, I was just joking. <laughs> look, look how its face gets all red. He's like a little strawberry. I like this subplot because of how it deals with bigotry. The point of the episode is that bigotry is bad, but on the flip side, they show the sad reality that some bigots can't be reasoned with or changed. In the words of Michael Jefferson, they're ignorant. Even the normally innocent Butters is told at the assembly that the M slur is offensive. Who knows what a little person is? Okay. Not exactly. That term is actually considered offensive. Yet when the fight breaks out, Butters comes screaming. Fellas, come quick! Cartman's gonna fight the- I kind of feel bad for Nelson, but at the same time, he could have walked away. But for himself, he keeps trying to one-up Cartman, even if he keeps getting to him. In the end, Nelson tries to beat up Cartman to prove a point. Cartman somehow wins, only to push his luck. Now say, Carol Ann, don't go into the light! Carol Ann, don't go into the light! <laughs> I have proven my point! My work here is done! What was his point? I have no idea. I think it was that words are like bullets and you let them pass right through you. Uh, I don't think that's how bullets work, but I get what you're saying. However, Stan doesn't get it, and that gives him an epiphany. I get it now. I don't get it. I'll never really get how it feels for a black person to have somebody use the N-word. Now you get it, Stan. Yeah, I totally don't get it. Thanks, dude. However, it goes without saying, there's the fact that Carmen and Token have a weird friendship. Well, actually, it's a one-sided friendship, like a racist fan. Carmen oscillates between positive discrimination, racist ignorance, and outright hatred. Sometimes he thinks Token is his best friend after Kenny. When Cartman's house burned down, he begged Leanne to go to Token's house because it was the only place where he felt safe. Why are you involving me in this? Token, please. You're the only person I can trust. Because in today's time, black people are somehow incapable of doing anything wrong. Yep, totally safe. In hindsight, knowing the twist, part of me thinks Cartman just picked Token because Token has a huge fancy mansion. It would make the finale so much more dramatic. Or what about that time that Heidi finally realized Cartman was a gaslighting a-hole and broke up with him? Cartman went straight to Token's for dinner. Heidi broke up with me. Token, he's freezing. Come on in out of the snow. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that line was actually really cute. What time do you guys usually go out and disrespect the flag and stuff? What? Oh no. Don't tell me you guys already disrespected the flag and flipped over cards today. Did I miss it? Gurpin, Token's family does not burn the flag. Do you even know how long it takes to burn a flag? Me neither. Now I'm kind of curious. The crowning moment is World War Zimmerman. Off the heels of the George Zimmerman trial, Cartman believes that Token is a ticking time bomb of pure violence. He tries to do whatever to stay on Token's good side. Uh, I'm just getting busy. Yeah, I'm just hanging out with Token. Did you know if it wasn't for African Americans, we wouldn't have rock and roll? So cool that we have a black president. It's about time. 
To make matters worse, Cartman has had bad dreams about the George Zimmerman trial and thinks that black people will riot. Only because this is Cartman, he thinks of it like World War Z, with the black people being the zombies and Cartman being Brad Pitt. Ah! You, Brad Pitt! FYI, World War Z is a terrible movie that's an adaptation in name only for the book. And the book is so much better, trust me. Really, it should have been a miniseries. However, Cartman's dreams get more and more twisted. Good morning, Gus. Save Daddy any pancakes? Look at that, 6 a.m. and my family is already smiling. Cartman, you really are evil. What kind of a father wakes their children up at 6 a.m.? What is this, the 1920s? To make matters worse, Token is in the newest dream. Token, we had nothing to do with it! I know you're pissed off, Token, but be reasonable! <laughs> you, Brad Pitt! No! Mackie tries to get Token and Cartman to talk things through. And to help with his therapy, Cartman recites a poem. I was not the bullet, so Token, you should be cool while we're all here at SKU. Can I go back to class now? Weirdly, I feel like Token isn't as upset with the George Zimmerman verdict as he usually would be. I don't know, I'm just saying like beforehand. Eh, it doesn't matter. Oh, and Cartman also performs his poem in front of the entire school and tries to rally the two races together. Zimmerman was wrong! No, no, so. Zimmerman was wrong! It's not Eric, so. But he does it Cartman style. I think the white people are winning! White people got you beat, black people you better represent! Let me hear you say, I don't blame the white people! No, no, no! Alright, that's enough! Wow, if Token did not want to tip over cars, eat brains, or riot, he's gonna want to do that now. What the hell is wrong with you? Why are you all sitting here listening to this? Look okay, out here, kids! Get down, everybody, get down now! Self-fulfilling prophecy! Cartman thinks the end of the world is coming and makes up the idea of a zombie apocalypse, with Token being Patient Zero. Anyone with information regarding Patient Zero is asked to contact the authorities immediately. Holy moly! <laughs> I can't stop, I'm sorry. This, it's so screwed up. It was totally unscripted. To help with his quest, he goes to Jimbo's to restock on guns. Dude, I should make a video on these two. Jimbo is like a surrogate dad to Cartman. Jimbo says you can't go kill people willy-nilly, sort of. There's castle doctrine laws, stand your ground laws, etc. As he explains, With a stand your ground law, you could legally shoot somebody that's threatening you. Yes, yes, that's what I need. I'll take that. No, no, you gotta be in the state with the stand your ground law. This is hopeless. How am I supposed to shoot Token with all these stupid ruse? Realizing there is a stand your ground law in Florida, Cartman changes tactics and decides to go shoot George Zimmerman himself. Wait, what? <laughs> Dad, I'm so sorry. It's just so screwed up. The outbreak won't happen if we shoot George Zimmerman. We have to get to Florida! Cartman makes it to Zimmerman's house, where he's shot by Zimmerman, who believes him to be the patient zero. Too bad Cartman's as white as snow, so Zimmerman is arrested. This kid isn't black, he's white. Wait, what? Guilty! <laughs> Thankfully for Cartman, he can now enact his real plan. Inside the red line is... That's, that's my grand. Spoiler alert, Cartman does not get in trouble for nearly killing Token, and this just angers him some more. You owe each other an apology or you're getting detention. An apology? He shot me! Well, he was technically standing his ground, Token. Wait, but the show already made the point that Colorado does not have a standing your ground law. Unless, say, Cartman's actions cause them to adopt one. Eh. However, I can't go without mentioning the episode Cartman Finds Love. One day, the boys discover there's a new girl at school and that she's a cheerleader. Naturally, they all decide on the pickings. All right, guys, all right. If there is a new girl at our school, we're not going to start putting claims on her and getting in a big fight. It's going to be her choice who she likes the most. Probably because you know you have no chance, Cartman. Just admit it. Only it turns out that the new girl, Nicole, with an H, as in June's baby Nicole, is black. Dum dum dum. Aw, uh, that's awesome, Token. I'm happy for you. Why? Why are you happy for me? I, I heard through the grapevine that you've got a thing for Cal. Oh no, who told you that? Just the grapevine. Why does Nicole sound familiar? My diamond! Your diamond! Pink diamond! You know, I should talk about that show. 
Also, she voiced Skara, but Skara doesn't have that many lines. She deserves better. Naturally, Cartman is happy for Token. Being a racist, Cartman thinks that you could only date people in your race group. As Nicole and Token are the only black kids at school, that means they should get together. You guys will be really cute together. What are you going to say to her? Nothing. Oh, sorry there aren't any overweight girls for you, Cartman. But maybe you could go after Lisa Berger. Cartman tells the girls that Token has a crush on Nicole. But unfortunately, Nicole has a crush on the Daywalker Kyle. Oh, you mean Kyle? Yeah. She likes Kyle. What? That's cool, but to Cartman, it's super not cool because only Kyle can belong to him. No, I'm not joking. To get Nicole off Kyle's back, Cartman lies and says that he and Kyle are a couple. The thing is, me and Kyle are kind of, you know, together. Oh. Yeah, he's my man. Kyman confirmed? Question, what if Kyle's bi? Oh wait, this is Cartman we're talking about. Bi people could not possibly exist. To help in his little escapade, he manipulates Token and Nicole into getting trapped in the gym overnight, hoping that with time alone, they'll act like two racehorses. Damn, Cartman, does your racism know no bounds? Love is like taking a dump, Butters. Sometimes it works itself out, but sometimes... You gotta give it a nice, hard, slimy push. Ew, now I don't want to date ever! Thanks, Cartman. You ruined my heart when I was about to give it a chance. On the bright side, I think this is like the first episode where we meet Cupid and me, if I'm not mistaken. We did it, Eric. We found them each other's ray of sunshine. You're my ray of sunshine, Cupid me. <laughs> Kyle hears that Cartman told everybody that they play butt tag, and he is not happy. What the hell are you doing telling people that we're a gay couple? Oh, heard that through the grapevine, did you? Which, the more I think about it, won't this backfire on Cartman for reasons other than ignorance? What if he likes a girl, but because of his rumors, she thinks that he's like one of the Teletubbies? Looks like he shot himself in the heart. You give love a bad name, my friend. And besides, you're in grade school. Kids are mean. You're just opening yourself up to getting teased and bullied. Oh, and it turns out that Nicole and Token aren't the first kids he set up on the virtue of race alone. It's how nature works. Thanks, Kyle. What about Luke Covina and Maria Sanchez? Is it a coincidence they ended up together? Actually, I heard they're together because they got locked in the school gym overnight a few months ago. What? However, Kyle did not need to do anything. Nicole's dad makes it clear that she does not need to date Token just because they're both black. So she starts to seriously think about their relationship until the pair break up amicably. Amicably. I think you're really great. We just... I think you're really great. I'm sorry. Cartman is devastated. <laughs> it's gonna be okay, Eric. It's not gonna be okay! Why did they break up? Butters, you're in a small white trash mountain town. The chance of another black family moving there is one in a million. Crud nuggets, now I sound like Cartman. Cartman is so distraught that he kills Cupid me. <laughs> He's a figment of Cartman's imagination. Of course he's dead forever. Kyle takes the opportunity to ask Nicole out and takes her to a Denver Nuggets game. Oh no, he's gonna ruin things by being racially tolerant. How dare he? Cartman marches down to the game, gets on the Jumbotron, which is also called the Megatron, that was a nice touch, and tells the world that he and Kyle love each other. I love you, man. You can run all you want. Try to pretend you like girls, but damn it, when we kiss, there's magic! Don't let it go, Cal. Oh god, if only he were telling the truth. Kyle tells Nicole what's really going on, and because of Cartman's meddling, only Token and Nicole are left in the stadium. The color of your skin doesn't matter. Yay! Oh my god, so cute! Thankfully, Cartman sort of gets karma. People who are the same belong together. Hey, stop it! Yes! 
You know, I'm surprised people say that Tweek and Craig were forced together. It's not that they weren't, but did you guys even watch this episode? Besides, they even said this is not the first time Cartman has done it. I'm surprised that in the episode where we first find out about Tweek and Craig, he did not help the townsfolk or the Yaoi girls. However, that's not even the biggest reveal. Do you want to know the truth? Can you handle the truth? Token's real name is not Token Black as in the token black kid. It's Tolkien, as in J.R.R. Tolkien. <gasps> I mean, I knew, that's why I've been calling him Tolkien this whole video. Did you hear me say it? And if you didn't, you are disgusting and evil and part of the problem. Truly unaccessible. But anyhow, I can't leave the video without discussing the big fix. Randy thinks that the Marsh family is being racially intolerant because they don't have any black friends and also because it would help tag Rudy Farms, Avi. He implores Dan to invite Token's family over to the farm for dinner. At the past year or so, a lot of people have been inviting us over to dinner and then taking pictures of us to show everyone on Instagram. Linda, I know it sucks dealing with condescending white people, but hey, at least you get a free meal. That's a positive, eh? Hey? Randy asked the family why they named their child Token. I wanted to name my son after my favorite author, but she didn't want to name our son J.R.R., so we just named him Token. I thought your name was Token. My name is Token. Couldn't you have also named him John Ronald Rawl? Stan is perplexed at this life-shattering revelation, which I already knew, and tries to ask other people about Token's name. Turns out they all knew, including Cartman, who can't spell to save his life. Then why did you spell it Token without the L or the I? J.R.R. Token has an L in it? Then when Stan confesses he was unintentionally racist, which honestly good on you kid, considering the previous episodes, everybody acts like he did something reprehensibly evil, including his own doctor, who even makes the point to break the fourth wall. You were just going along with the dominant culture of the white paradigm, that's what you were just- Get out of my office, you make me sick! The doctor prescribes his treatment. Then I suggest you start doing a lot of reading. And I suggest that when you're reading, you do it from the perspective of a black person. So Stan does so. Tom Bombadil was a merry fellow. Bright blue's jacket was, and his boots was yellow. Um, Stan, I think the doctor meant read books by black authors. Octavia Butler's really good if you're into sci-fi. However, Stan is a little too much like his pop. As he tries to push for the school to incorporate J.R.R. Tolkien into the curriculum. The thing is, he does this without even consulting Tolkien. He even makes him step out of the room. I think maybe we all haven't done enough to make sure that Tolkien doesn't feel isolated and left out. Guys, can I come in now? Not yet, Token, just another couple minutes. Rude. Besides, Stan, nobody's gonna read the books when they could just as easily watch the movies. Except The Hobbit, because that's like one book split into like three movies. It's stupid. To me, when I read a book from school, I wonder, is it gonna make me try to unalive John Lennon? And also, dude, did you really have to go through all of this? You know who your principal is. I'm like 98% sure if you went to PC principal and told him the same spiel you're telling these kids, he would agree. At the same time, some people have accused J.R.R. Tolkien of being racist. Albeit, I'm not versed in his work, so I can't comment, and I don't want to spread any misinformation, but that's a critique he has gotten, especially in regards to the orcs. Maybe PC Principal knows this, so he could probably go and, you know what, bro? The orcs and Lord of the Rings are extremely racist, bro, and that's not cool, bro, and that's two-week detention, we'll see you after school, Stan. Thanks to Stan's dedication in white guilt, he has gotten the school to celebrate Tolkien Appreciation Day, only to learn the harsh truth. I actually don't like Lord of the Rings. I've always hated that my name is Tolkien, but I didn't really have a choice, did I? Whatever you do, just don't draw any more attention to my name. <laughs> Sucks to be you. This has always made me wonder about the previous episodes, where Tolkien was unapologetically token. Like in Raising the Bar, when we got to see Fatty Doo-Doo for the first time, it's produced by Token Black Productions, not Tolkien Black Productions, like right here. 
Token Black Production. How do you explain that away? What's the point if you saw or heard it as Token Black, you were racist? Or did it say Token always hate his name, so he just went with the nickname because it was easier or he got used to it or something like that? He never corrected anybody after all. And honestly, him hating his name makes a lot of sense. In the Lord of the Rings episode, Token watched the adult movie he fought with Lord of the Rings only to to end up traumatized with a thousand yard stare. Five <laughs> spanking a man covered with thousand island dressing. Is that making love? He's gonna need a ton of therapy just to look in the mirror. I'm sure that assembly with David Nelson was truly traumatizing for him. Also, keep in mind this episode takes place in the later seasons where the townsfolk tries to be as progressive as possible. I could totally buy everybody and their mother thinking that Token's name was Token and being as clueless as Stan, only to learn the truth likely the same way that Stan and Randy did. How many of you knew that our classmate Token was named after J.R. Token? could extra explain the doubling down. Like, oh, I'm not racist. I always knew that Token's name was really Tolkien. As in J.R.R. Tolkien, I'm so progressive. Linda did bring up earlier how the people kept using the family as props by inviting them to dinner. I'm sure this isn't the first time they've had to have this conversation. Holy cow. Could you imagine PC principal and strong woman getting this conversation? Maybe it was like that episode where he met Jimmy. Anyhow, because of the incident, Stan doesn't want to talk to Token. Stanley, are you feeling any better? Nope. Not any better, Mom. Again, taken after your pops, hiding from your problems. Good on you, kid. However, Token comes over to talk things through. Now, if Token should be mad at anything, it should be the extra emphasis Stan keeps putting on his name. Like, he's not Tolkien, he's Tolkien. Hey, Tolkien. Tolkien. Just saying, something I've realized in real life is when people want to be progressive towards me, they'll always refer to me by my full name, or they put extra emphasis on my first name. I already hate my full name as it is because it's an old lady name. Honestly though, one of you guys did guess correctly on the Cartman video, but if I tell you I want to go by my nickname, you're not being offensive by calling me that. While Token is upset, he realizes that Stan did not mean to be intentionally hateful. And better yet, because of the B-plot, Token's family now lives across the street from Stan's family. Yay! Out of the blue, my dad was just like, we're going into the farming business. And we all just picked up and moved. Oh my god, this is great! What wonders will these two rambunctious little scamps get into? I don't know. Check out these two specials to find out. They were not my favorite, mostly because of the pee jokes, but I did like the Cartman song. Anyhow, that's my video on Token, guys. South Park is many things, most notably offensive, but in a way, South Park uses this mindset to talk about serious issues in a way that doesn't seem condescending or offensive. True, there are exceptions, but this is where we get amazing characters. Token might be the only black kid in town, but he's usually the straight man to a lot of insane antics, and he isn't held up as the dude made to police everybody's racial failings. It's kinda nice. Oh, and if you heard me at any point refer to Tolkien as Tolkien, well, screw you, buddy boy. Obviously, I was saying Tolkien. And you know what? Let me end the video with this, so if you are a racist a-hole, you can get help. Then please call 1-800-I-AM-A-GIANT-PIECE-OF- <laughs> Because you are the f***ing problem.